Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 7th March 2024. So we are going to take Delhi edition here and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And after once you are picking out of articles, we are going to see like in how many dimensions we can think about the topic. so that you will be getting a multi dimensional approach from a topic point of view and even we are going to interconnect subjects as well so this multi dimensional approach and interlinking of subjects that is very useful to get your own perspectives and that is very important from your mains point of view and even in your personality test that is an interview point of view as well so that is a thing that we are going to learn from this current affairs analysis So if you are watching this current affairs of Rathod's IELTS please do watch every day okay please do watch every day and one more thing here is please show consistency like me so even though i got tonsillitis so i am here to record the video especially for the sake of my students so in the same way try to show your consistency and try to watch this video style okay so now you can see the first article from the front page of hindu so the title says trees in gobet fell prey to greedy nexus says supreme court so here this article is talking about nexus okay nexus between whom so nexus between politicians and officials and this article is talking about jim corbet national park and one more thing here is felling of trees so there are three important concepts which are involved here and we are going to see the dimensions okay so my voice may not be clear okay today so please do adjust for today so because i am getting a very lot of uh, throat pain so even i can't drink water or take food okay so please do adjust for today so here this article is talking about Corbett National Park. Okay, full name is Jim Corbett National Park. This is the first important thing. And next one is about felling of trees. And third one is nexus. it is between officials and politicians now let us see like from which subject point of view this article is important so this is important from your gs paper 3 under environment and ecology okay and here also it is important from environment and ecology and this topic is important from gs paper 4 ethics so from here this topic you can get a case study directly okay for example you are a subordinate in so and so project so you found that your seniors and politicians you are having nexus and they are doing some illegal things that is affecting the environment so in this context what are the options that you are having so evaluate the options that you are having and even you can get a question like choose your what is this choose the course of action so in this way you can get question from your case study from ethics point of view from this topic okay so as i said So we are going to see even ethics related case studies. So this is one case study that you can expect in your examination. Okay, so here you can also add this topic under GS paper one under geography, because we are going to see the location of the Zim Corbett National Park. It is in state of Uttarakhand. And one more important prelims question that you can expect here is. So recently, so and so national park is in news. In which state is located? So in two thousand eighteen and in two thousand nineteen, the same way question asked. 
It is a very easy question if you know 100% answer. But in that type of questions, you can't take a risk. Okay. Especially you have to see national parks from northeast area and south. So from this area, yes, you can get question regarding this national parks. And even 2022 also there was question regarding this national parks. So all these are the different dimensions that you have to see from this article point of view. So now let us see the notes. Let us try to understand why it is in use first of all. So what happened there is intervention of Supreme Court. Supreme Court condemned the illegal felling of over 6000 trees. Yes, if you see the number, it is very huge. That is around 6,000 trees had been felled down. For what? For construction of buildings. And they want to promote eco-tourism at this Zim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand region. So, Supreme Court is saying that, yes, this is one classical example which shows the nexus between politicians and as well as officials. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said. So, it is saying that even there is a greedy nexus, like even politicians, they want to expand their, okay, and even here officials, they are having the greedy to get money from these politicians. And we can say that there is a nexus between these officials and politicians. That is an important reason for this felling down of 6,000 trees in the name of development of ecotourism in this Jim Corbett National Park. And if you dig into details, it says that, the present case depicts a sorry state of affairs and it is because of human greed that is devastating one of the most celebrated abodes of tigers. So this Zim Corbett National Park is one of the important place where we can see these tigers and it is also a tiger reserve. So this is the thing which mainly said by three judge bench. And the court also directed that the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change to form a specialized committee and this committee need to study and it has to recommend whether tiger safaris should be permitted in these buffer areas or not. So in this national parks we have important areas like core area, buffer area and transition area and you have to know what is the difference between this core area, buffer area and transition area. And which are the activities allowed and which are the activities banned in which area. So from that way also you can expect a prelims based question. Clear? So you have to focus on that as well. And now let us see some facts regarding this Jim Corbett National Park. And also we are going to see what is a flora, what is a fauna that we can see in this national park. So this flora and fauna also one of the important area of UPSC where you can expect question. So if you're talking about the Zim Corbett National Park, it is located in Nainital district. Okay, where it is located? It is located in Nainital district of Uttarakhand. And this project Tiger was launched in 1973 in this Corbett National Park. And it is part of Corbett Tiger Reserve also. So when was this national park established? In year 1936. Okay, especially endangered Bengal tiger used to be present in this region. And the name after this Jim Carbet who played a very key role in this establishment of National Park. So the National Park got the name on this person that is Jim Carbet National Park. Okay, and even the core area we have this Sonandi Wildlife Sanctuary as well. And the entire area of this reserve is mountainous. And it falls under Sivalik and Outer Himalaya Geographical Provinces. So, we are talking about types of Himalayas. We have different types of Himalayas. Right? I will write here. So, that is also very important. So, first we have Trans Himalayas. Okay. So, first these Trans Himalayas were found. And most of the glaciers, they were present in these Trans Himalayas. And below this, we have Greater Himalayas. Okay, and after this we have Himachal, Himachal Himalayas or we can say that is Lesser Himalayas. 
and below this lesser himalayas we will be having this outer himalayas or shivalyas okay so first trans himalayas next greater himalayas lesser himalayas and shivalyas you have to remember these four things and even you have to see like longitudinal division of himalayas as well okay kashmir himalayas nepal himalayas okay like that so we have different rivers okay so based on that rivers we are dividing those himalayas on this longitudinal basis so you have to see that as well and if you are moving on to the flora and fauna so flora is we are having dense moist deciduous forest so we are having dense moist deciduous forest and according to this bsi that is botanical survey of india so this jim corbett is having around 600 species of plants so how many species of plants it is around 600 species of plants trees shrubs ferns grass climbers herbs and bamboo so these were the around 600 species of plants were present in this jim corbett national park and even most visible trees are like sal tree kher siso so these were the most visible trees in this jim corbett national park and if you come to this fauna so we have tigers you know that it is a tiger reserve so apart from this tigers we are also having other animals like leopards and even we are having other mammals like jungle cats and barking deers spotted deers samba deers sloth so these were the some major animals that we can see in this jim corbett national park and even we are having other protected areas in uttarakhand like we have other national parks like nanda devi national park valley of flowers and these two they were together called as unesco world heritage sites and apart from that we have rajaji national park we are having gangotri national park govind national park so from this area also you can expect prelims question like which of the following national parks are located in state of uttarakhand so in this we also have to prepare so not only the national park which is seen in news but even you have to see other national parks which are in news also okay i hope it is very much clear so if you are like understanding how to read the articles and how to cope with the subjects don't forget to hit the like button so please do hit the like button and please encourage me and support us so this is about this article and i want to show you map where exactly this jim corbett national park is located so this is uttarakhand right so here in this area we have this jim corbett national park yeah, and now let us move on to our paper back so this is the only article which is very important from our first paper and here you can see one more article that is ensure park does not divert loans to food defense bills india to imf so now we have to see lots and lots of dimensions why because we are having issues with pakistan so now let us see this is india this is pakistan is or no and here we have sri lanka so just i am drawing a schematic diagram so if talking about our neighboring countries like pakistan and sri lanka they are facing financial crisis so we can call it as dop balance of payment crisis so now please listen to the story that i am going to tell you it will be interesting okay i will make it interesting okay so even though it is not interesting i will try to make it much more interesting so these countries are facing financial crisis or balance of payment crisis now so whenever any country per se not only pakistan sri lanka but even india approached imf at is international monetary fund to get some help okay so not only pakistan recently sri lanka also went to imf to get help so for sri lanka 
India supported. India also said IMF to give the loans to Sri Lanka. So like that India supported loans for Sri Lanka. And IMF finally accepted to provide loans to Pakistan. And now the cause of concern here is always we are having the clashes. Always we are having the clashes between India and Pakistan across LOC region line of control and even across border region and especially Pakistan is claiming entire Kashmir region okay and even we are having issues of terrorism terrorism or terror groups so we are saying that terrorism in Pakistan is state sponsored terrorism Okay, state sponsored terrorism, etc. So these were the some issues, and even we are facing drug trafficking, arms trafficking, and even here attacking of our air base by using drones. Okay, etc. So these were the some recent issues that we are seeing between India and Pakistan. So now here IMF said that we are going to give the loans to Pakistan. So now India is saying that. Here, IMF need to ensure that Pakistan should not divert the loans that they are getting from IMF to food this defense bill. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said. So here you have to see like what are the reasons for this financial crisis of Pakistan. So recently floods in Pakistan, okay, inflation in Pakistan. Okay, so those are the very important reasons that led to financial crisis of this Pakistan. So here if you see this infographic, you can understand. 2022 floods, external shocks, economic shrank had happened and even forex reserves had been collapsed. Okay, so because of this Pakistan approached IMF to get help. So this is the thing which mainly said. And here India requested IMF to monitor like how they are using the loans which are provided by this IMF. That's it. And here you can also get a question from IMF. You have to know some basic facts like GK, general knowledge regarding IMF. And even what are the objectives and mandate and what are the functions of this IMF. So these two are very important. So these are the dimensions that you have to know from this article point of view and even you have to say like which are the states sharing boundary with Pakistan. So in city page there is nothing much important you can move on to this state speech. Okay so this is state speech and even the state speech also most of the articles are political articles don't waste your time in reading those political articles you will be getting nothing. Okay, instead you will be wasting your time. Okay. So here there is one article. I hope you can see, right? Human wild conflict a state specific disaster. Human animal conflict is a state specific disaster. So, actually, recently Kerala cabinet, so I will tell you why it is in news. Kerala cabinet declared human animal conflict as a specific state related disaster. So, why, why state government decided this human animal conflict is a state specific disaster? Because in the recent days, there is increasing of deaths, increasing of injuries, crop and property loss, which are caused by recurrent, that is frequent inclusions or frequent human animal conflict. Okay, so because of this now, Kerala cabinet decided and declared that so this human wildlife conflict, it is a state specific disaster. So now let us see the dimension. So this is very very important topic and this human animal country is seen highly in news. 
so there will be a question for sure in your mains from environment and ecology so this article is talking about human animal conflict so now let us see the dimensions so this article is important from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so you have to see like what is this human animal conflict and you have to see like what are the reasons and you have to see the recent data especially in state of kerala and you have to see like what is the present context so why kerala cabinet decided this human animal conflict as a state related disorder disaster and here this word disaster is very important from gs paper 3 again you have to see like what is the meaning of disaster okay so what can be the steps taken to reduce this type of incidents in future so what are the measures or way forward so these all are the dimensions that you have to see from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and as well as from disaster point of view and even you have to know what are the advantages if anything which is decided as a state specific disaster so what is the significance of this move that you have to see so now let us see this article in detail so if you see context as i said kerala cabinet declared human animal or human wildlife conflict is a state specific disaster it is a state specific disaster and the decision comes in the wake of increasing of death there is increasing of deaths increasing of injuries and the crop and there is also property loss so why it is caused by recurrent wildlife incursions into human habitation so animals are entering into human habitats so now let us see what is the reason so i will give you one diagram so if you want you can draw that diagram even you can use that diagram in your exam so let us take this is the forest area so earlier what happened so this is the forest area so animals used to present in this region so what happened now so what happened now is there is decreasing of habitat like only in this areas now we have this forest so we are going for cultivation here okay so that is nothing but we went for deforestation and we are converting this agricultural land we are converting it into agricultural land okay so earlier entire this area animal used to move now what happens so animals are also coming and coming into this area also so this is the main reason that leads to human animal conflict okay so this is the one important reason why there is human animal conflict so i hope you understood the reasons so first and the foremost reason is because of habitat loss correct so because of habitat loss and because of loss okay that they are facing and even there is less prey and no availability of water okay so even there was one report okay so which says about the decreasing of hangul population so in sunday's newspaper itself we discussed about that hangul population is decreasing day by day why because there is lack of water available there is less availability of water and especially pregnant and lactating hangul 
they are coming outside of their habitat in search of water and they are coming in contact with the humans that is leading to the important cause of the death of these hangles and that is an important reason for the decreasing of this hangle population hangle is also called as kashmir stag so in this way wherever you are reading articles so you can link in this way okay in sunday's newspaper we discussed about this hangle okay so even if you want to see that topic so in the thumbnail of uh, class itself we will be uh, having this animal that is hangle so you can watch that video okay so in this way wherever we are getting examples or case studies or any data so try to interconnect that so that you can write a very beautiful answer believe me so now let us see this topic in detail so recently in kerala cabinet declared this human animal conflict as a state specific disaster clear and next one is the cabinet declaration has opened the door for kerala state disaster management authority to play a vital role in mitigating such conflicts to decrease such conflicts here kerala state disaster management authority which is having now it has to play an important role to decrease this type of events and cabinet also created a committee to alleviate that means to decrease the threat of wildlife to humans especially people who are working in plantations so please let me know which are the plantations you have grown in kerala let me know in the comment box don't forget about that and even tribal communities they are at a high risk of this human animal conflict and now government also decided to form neighborhood watch groups so these groups they will be acting as a grassroots vigilance in localities where there is high wildlife intrusions and the groups they will work with officials to mitigate the problem and they give advance warning to the people so that at least to some extent there is decreasing of this human animal conflicts and what are the reason for this increasing of conflicts day by day so first and the foremost reason here is habitat loss and even another reason here is lack of availability of food and as well as water and third important reason here is there is increasing of population okay so i'm talking about human population there is global human population rise so it is increasing the pressure for more housing more food grains etc and what are the space between animals and humans is there that space is decreasing day by day that is our important reason for this human animal conflict and this one is this coexistence between humans all too often leads to raise a rivalry and also there is a rise of contest for limited resources and finally that is leading to the conflict between this humans and wildlife and even there are also other threats you are facing okay like large animal population that is decreasing day by day and they are in the verge of extinction as well so because of human animal conflict there is a verge of extinction especially you can write example of hangul or kashmir stag and this is some important thing which mainly said so here the problem here is if you are not properly diagnosing the problem and appropriate measures if you are not taking that will become a very serious problem okay that will become a very serious problem and that could extend way beyond the current pool of activities okay so in this way here the conservation is very very important and government need to come up with efficient policy program so that government can limit this type of incidents and why whatever the current strategies that are there that are not fully sufficient why they are not addressing this human animal conflict so this also a very big question and this question you can get a 10 markers in your mains for sure so focus here so what are the strategies and solutions you are currently are in place they are insufficient to address problem to address problems so what are the policies what are the strategies what are the solutions we are using they are not at all sufficient and as one is we have to focus on even management measures so management measures are often implemented in a fragmented way 
and especially they are focusing on conservation but they are not focusing on habitat loss and next one is there is lack of coordinated and sufficient support there is lack of sufficient support and lack of coordination with other sectors with other organizations okay so this is also one important issue why we are having even though many schemes many measures but they are not sufficient to address this issue of human animal conflict and what are the solutions the so solution here is we have to come up with effective management strategies and we have to focus on integrated approaches so that we can reduce this type of incidents and next one is strategies not only benefit biodiversity and also impacted communities but also they will be helpful for society and they'll be focusing on especially sustainable development and they'll also helpful for production and as well as global economy so in all these areas so these strategies will be very helpful and even it is very important for global cooperation that means all countries they need to come together and they need to take the steps why because for example if you are talking about animals okay for example let us talk about tigers they are not only present in india but even in other countries and if you are talking about cheetah cheetah is not only extended in india but even other countries also but we came with this introduction reintroduction project okay so what is yes many of them had died so it is another thing so here wherever the countries are having the similar population of animals so they have to come together and they have to come up with the common conservation methods and next one is we have to achieve coexistence and we need to reassess the relations between people and wildlife and further we have to find solutions that mainly address this underlying causes of conflicts so this is also very important and we can take some case studies also like how in other countries they achieved this problem or how they reduce this human animal conflict okay so in this way we can write an answer clear i hope it is very much clear so if you understood this topic please hit the like button and don't forget to hit the like button and let us move on to editorial page directly and today you have a goodness like so there is nothing much very important in our editorial page already the most of the articles are political articles and there is only one article that is new that is not at all new but we didn't have the discussion till now that is about patanjali so how many will be using this patanjali products so even in my how my house so we will be using this patanjali dishwash bar so that will be nash color okay so let me know how many are using this patanjali products so at least tell me how many of you visited this patanjali store so in this editorial page so this is about ed we discuss this topic and this is political article so we are not going to touch politics at all and this article it is about especially legislature should complement judiciary in fighting corruption so already we discussed about this topic regarding corruption so we are not going to see the political issues here so everything the political issues which are given here we are going to uh, we are not going to see that especially you have to see like what is this prevention of money laundering act here and you have to know what is this corruption and what are the recommendations of second arc report to address this corruption so these are the very important areas that you have to focus on and next one is you have to see even pca prevention of corruption act also and next one is so this is the topic which i am saying that is about miracle drug okay so there are some important uh, acts that you have to remember regarding this magical drug or miracle drug and you have to see like what is the one important act which is talking about advertisements of these drugs and this topic is at most important and we are going to see this article in detail so title says the tale of have money by miracle drug so if you see context it says that recently supreme court prohibited patanjali ayurveda from disseminating advertisements that claim to treat medical conditions such as bp diabetes fevers epilepsy lupus and outlined they are outlined in 
ड्रग्स एंड मैजिक रेमिडीज ऑब्जेक्टेबल एडवर्टाइजमेंट एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन सो अंडर दिस एक्ट नाउ रिसेंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट प्रोहिबिटेड वॉट एडवर्टाइजमेंट ऑफ दिस पतांजलि प्रोडक्ट विच आर क्लेमिंग टू रिवर्स इवन वी आर सेंग दैट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव इट अगेन रिवर्स द कंडीशन ऑफ बी पी डायबिटिस फीवर एपिलेप्सी एक्सेट्रा सो इफ यू सी डी टेल्स इट से दैट द कोर्ट रिस्ट्रेंट पतांजलि फ्रॉम डिस्क्रेटिंग एलोपति ओके सो इट इज गिविंग एडवर्टाइजमेंट इवन दे आर डिस्क्रेटिंग एलोपति एंड इट्स कैंपेन फ्रॉम एडवर्टाइजिंग प्रोडक्ट्स आर क्लेम टू क्योर chronic conditions like chronic means very long that means if you see bp so, uh, uh, most of the old age people they will be having this bp and even diabetes mellitus like that so this decision was based on the court's observation that patanjali's advertisements they were misleading particularly in presenting its products as offering permanent relief okay so it is violation of the law So, if you see, court cited the provisions of this drugs and magic remedies, objectable advertisements act of nineteen fifty four, and its rule in support of its decision. And if you're talking about this act, so this act is talking about advertisements. Okay, so it is controlling drug advertisements in India, and even it prohibits the ads claiming magical properties and makes such ads they are under cognizable offence. and if you talk about this definition of magical remedy it is like any talisman or mantra or amulet or object which is claiming miraculous powers to cure diseases in humans or animals so it also includes the devices claiming to influence the structure or the function of organs in humans or animals so if you talking about the prohibited advertisements like in using miscarriage or pro- uh, preventing conception in women so they are like prohibited advertisements and even improving or maintaining sexual pressure capacity and correcting menstrual disorders and the curing diagnosing or preventing diseases or the conditions that included schedule so in these diseases so there there are no advertisements so there is a prohibition of advertisements and uh, next one here is important article that is about bribery charges So recently, Supreme Court overturned this judgment, right? So because of this, this is news. So we are we are going to see that. So we already discussed about what is this J M M bribery case. So again, let us have a small and short discussion on this topic because it appeared in text and context. So here, Article One Hundred Five, Sub Clause Two of Indian Constitution, which provides comforts means that it provides. MPs, that is, member of parliament's immunity from prosecution, respect of anything said or any vote given by parliament or any parliamentary committee. So the same way for MLAs also, Article nine one ninety four sub class two grants the protection. Okay, that is called as immunity. So in this P V Narasimha Rao ruling involves nineteen ninety three J M M bribery case. It is against. former union minister that is shivu soren the father in law of seeta soren the petitioner of this present case so here finally chief justice overturned the judgment of this jmm and said that yes there is no immunity for this mps and mlas for taking bribe for voting okay in the parliament or in the state legislative assembly so this is the thing which mainly said and next topic is italian top courts ruling on sea migrants from libya so i am expecting that this year there will be a question on map pointing from israel and also and also there is a high chance of getting question regarding this libya also or else even you can get a question regarding this what is happening in libya so in this way you can get a question in your prelims okay from your map based or international relations point of view So if you see context it says that in 2018 a ship name is SO28 picked up around 101 migrants okay and returned them to libyan coast guard So a lower italian court prosecuted the ship's captain in 2021 and finding them guilty for violating international humanitarian and refugee laws So migrants This year you can get 
question your means regarding migrants and what are the laws are present in india which are protecting these migrants for sure in your means so you have to focus on this topic for sure and if you see details it says that the expanse of mediterranean sea between libya and italy is among the most dangerous albeit used passage so actually this expanse between this mediterranean sea which is present between this libya and italy which is used especially for the passage of migrants from sub saharan africa who are coming out of the sub saharan sub saharan africa because of this ethnic conflict because of war like conditions because of famine like conditions so they are fleeing out and they are using this mediterranean sea as a route and even united nation human right council which is saying that so last year it said that there were reasonable grounds to believe that the crimes against humanity have been committed against libyans and migrants throughout libya so especially people of libya they face lots and lots of humanitarian crisis okay so this is the thing which mainly said and these are the very important articles that appear in our today's newspaper but apart from that there are also other articles in news pages so we are going to see that okay so i discussed yeah so this also very important so crimes against foreigners in india rarely result in convictions so recently what happened so a woman from spanish around 45 years old spanish woman she was allegedly gang raped okay so she, this is not for the first time so many a times this type of incidents are happening so here i am not asking to go into the details of this rape etc but i am saying that so this article is important from this tourism point of view so how this type of crimes so how this type of crimes which are going to impact our tourism sector so this is the question that you have to see and i want to give you one scenario so it is important from your ethics so if you are an if you are a sp or if you are a police sub uh, police of that so and so area so what are the steps that you are going to take to address this type of issues so in this we also you can get a question so uh, prepare on this and from text and context i discuss these two articles and you can move on to this news page yes here you can see one article which is very important from your prelims i hope you can see right Yeah, Prime Minister launches India's first underwater metro line in Kolkata. So you can get a question like recently our Prime Minister inaugurated underwater metro line in which city? And they'll be giving options like Pune, Kolkata, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and the option here is Kolkata. So in this way, you can expect questions from other state public service examination point of view. So our Prime Minister inaugurated Kolkata metros. planet haura maiden section so it passes below the mighty hugli river it is very important so under which river it is moving it is moving under this hugli river and it is the country's first underwater transportation tunnel okay it is very very important and you have to see what are the advantages of this type of transport system because we can say that this is a new transport system yes or no yes So here you have to see what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of this advancements like underwater metro line. And now let us move on to other important articles. Yes, you can see here it is about INS Jatayu. So Navy commissions INS Jatayu MH sixty R helicopter squadron. So here you have to see what is this INS Jatayu. Okay, so here why is it news? Our Indian Navy commissioned INS Jatayu at Minicoy Island. So please let me know where is this Minicoy Island located and which island groups. And here you have to see it is the first MH sixty R multi role helicopter squadron, and it is having a very important capability to boost its rotary fleet. and it is also helpful for anti submarine warfare capabilities 
okay so this is the thing and what is advantage or what is significance of this INS data you so you can see this paragraph so it will helpful to strengthen India's capability in surveillance and as well as security posture and we can place them at the strategically important locations of islands and we are going to place at this 9 degree channel okay and even we can place at the critical sea lanes because nowadays sea lanes ought to be protected and you can see like lots and lots of incidents are going on in this Red Sea region okay and because of this Houthi attacks so for that here this type of advanced technology is very very important that is the king uh, that is the thing which is mainly said here that's it and here you can see one more article that is resorts near tiger reserves have turned wedding destinations so you can see like if if these uh, areas when we are going for development of resorts in this tiger reserves region is how it is going to affect the environment in ecology and as well as biodiversity because when we are seeing these weddings so what happens so there will be the music which is played so because of music what happened loud volume which causes a disturbance in the habitats of these animals and even if you want to go for building of resorts that will lead to the felling of trees it will be affecting the biodiversity of that region and even lots and lots of waste will be generated that will lead to environment pollution right so here you have to see tiger resorts so the tiger reserves so i will tell you the dimensions one minute so here you have to focus on this tiger reserves and here you have to see like what are the challenges you have to see like what are the challenges faced by this tiger reserves and you have to see like what is the way forward or you have to see like what are the measures and one more homework i want to give you students that is you have to list out very important tiger reserves in india clear okay so there is nothing much important yeah here you can see very important topic that is with 8565 dead united nations says 2023 was the deadliest year in the decade for migrants again this article is talking about migrants so because of that i'm saying like so what are the organizations are present for the protection of migrants and even what are the acts are present to protect this migrants they are very very important and for sure in your mains you can expect a question from this migrants so there are about 8,565 8, people they died on migration routes worldwide in 2023 and it is the deadliest year since the records began a decade ago so united nations international organization for migration said so there is one organization which is dealing with this migrants that is united nation organization for migrants okay so because of this here now this organization is saying that yes we have to take urgent needs or urgent actions to prevent further loss of life okay so we have to provide a safe regular migration pathways okay so this is the thing which mainly said and especially here people they are using this mediterranean sea okay across the countries and it is a deadliest route for migrants so this is the thing which mainly said here and you have to see like what are the problems faced by migrants so i will give you dimensions you have to think so it is talking about migrants issue so you have to see first of all the definition of migrants And you have to see organizations which deals with these migrants or what are the acts or laws which are present like at the national level and at international level. And normally migrants you are taking which routes? For example Mediterranean Sea route and which countries most of the migration is happening. For example, Sub-Saharan Africa region. Okay. 
and you have to see like what are the challenges you are facing and you have to see like what is the way forward or what are the measures and even you can see like what are the reasons so for example ethnic conflicts for example wars food insecurity droughts okay bonded labor etc so here you have to see even reasons so these all are the dimensions that you have to see from this article point of view and for sure 100% you can get a question even in prelims also regarding this organizations okay so these are the very important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper that's all so now i will show you like where can you get the notes of this class so here in this rathod sai is classes telegram channel you can get the notes of this class and one more thing here is i already posted a news like please do uh, rate and review this rathod sai is academy in the google and i also posted the link so please use that and try to give your valuable review and rating so i am asking your genuine review and rating okay so don't forget and this is our youtube channel rathod sai is academy so do subscribe to this channel so that we are going to post much more videos from now onwards so that that will be enhance your knowledge and that will be helpful to make you prepare for your examination as well and this is our website rathod sai is academy website so prelims is very much near if you are facing any problem with a subject so you can take subscription of a single subject also that is very low cost even that is less than 3000 rupees for a single subject and you are also providing foundational course for offline and online so if you want to contact us and if you want to take admissions at which are already started so if you want to take admission for this offline course or online course yes you can call me on this number or text me on this number 8074765513 okay so that's all for today thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and share this video to your friends thank you so much